Hello all, this is Dan again. Uh, the topic is floating around in a couple of different forums and rather than try and write it all out everywhere, uh, I thought it would be more efficient just to record a little six or seven minute video. We'll see how it rolls here. So the the topic uh, is um, theater of the mind versus battle map. And uh, <clears throat> there are uh, many people who prefer battle maps, particularly those who came in at 3.5 or later, um, because um, they it provides a very efficient, uh, quick representation of of the action at hand. Uh, I personally very much prefer the theater of mind. I'm I'm not discounting the opinions of those who prefer a battle map. I, I, I know that there are legitimate reasons to prefer a battle map, but here, here's the reason I prefer theater of mind. So for me, the, the big takeaway, like the, the, you know, four hours in, three hours in, where, where I want to be is uh, I want to, with the players, uh, and, and I'm talking about as a DM, I want to, with the players, have constructed a, a strong story, right? Something that uh, people can go with their friends or, or even other players and uh, talk about, relate in the in in the following days. I don't get that from battle maps, right? Battle maps are very much like a board game rather than a a story narrative. Um, you can engineer it if you try really hard, right? You can you can augment battle map play with sufficient uh, description beyond the battle map to make it memorable. But uh, I just find that theater of the mind, you have a continuous flow of the narrative uh, and that uh, it, it ends up with a much smoother and much more complete story. Uh, you're also not restricted by uh, the precision placement of a battle map. So, Players are freer to use their imagination to construct um, uh, tactics uh, that, uh, when approached as a board game, would not be allowed. But when approached off of a battle map, uh, where we're just building a story together, um, we can do that. Um, so... Uh, and then there, there are just envi environments that I use a lot that don't frame themselves into a convenient battle map. Um, uh, chases and skills challenges and um, uh, transplanar um, combats. You know, um, those don't those don't adhere to a battle map very well. So. Um, those are the reasons I prefer theater mail. So then uh, it can be hard if you have, so, you know, I, I, I grew up doing theater mind. Battle maps weren't a thing when I began playing d, &D. Uh, The closest we came to a battle map, uh, would, we had graph paper that we would sketch out uh, the starting locations um, for efficiency, right? So the DM at the beginning of, a, of an encounter, um, I don't even think we called them encounters back then. Just a scene. It was just a scene. Um, so as a DM, you know, back when I'm very, very like within within hours, of like my first session, I realized, oh, you know what? If I just took a graph paper and sketched out the starting positions, um, I could just lay that down instead of having to spend uh, five or ten minutes describing as players. Um, and uh, and it wasn't until my, 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 my first battle map experiments probably wasn't until 1988, 89, somewhere in there. Um, but uh, so anyway, so it's just it's just never it just wasn't a thing for a long. So you just so without that thing, you just you just develop your way of going. And so um, what comes up a lot is, you know, particularly as the combat grows, how how do you keep things organized? And I will, and so, so to address that, I will tell you uh, that in in my mind, right? So, I, so I, I I actually have the the uh, the paper copy of the map, so I know what the I know what the terrain looks like, I know what the environment looks like, and in my mind, 
the first thing I look for is where is the melee scrum occurring, right? Because you're going to have this, you're going to have a group of melee types who are going, going to want to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that's going to form the center of, of, the, of the environment, of the combat environment. And then um, I'm going to be grouping all the other participants uh, relative to how far they are from that melee scrum, right? So I'm, I, if I, I've got to know, I, I'm just thinking uh, these, these people are one move away. These people are a dash away. Uh, these people are a long ways away, right? Um, and that's, that's just how I organize it. And, and then if you have someone like a monk who's a long ways away, but they're like, well, I can get there in one round and get in combat. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Right? I knew where you started. I know where you're going. Um, then the only thing you have to manage in that is like, well, are you going to provoke any, any attack of opportunity? Can you, can you sufficiently maneuver around to do what the thing you're trying to do um, and, and not leave someone's threat range? Um, which, you know, if you're in the melee and you're trying to leave the melee, you're almost certainly going to draw an attack of opportunity. And that I will, may use some dice to determine some of that. You know, it's like, well, you're definitely going to draw one. You, you, you could draw as many as three. And so we'll roll a die. I'll roll a die to determine it. Um, the other thing that comes up is, you know, how many people are included in my area of effect. And uh, so if, if there is a lot of commotion, a lot of movement, if people aren't in static positions, um, then I will usually go off of the suggestions in the, um, in the DMG, which is uh, if someone has a 10 foot radius, they're probably going to, they're going to affect two, uh, two targets, uh, 20 foot radius, three targets, 40 foot radius, uh, four targets, right? Up to uh, like 60 foot own can be five or six. Um, and then often uh, the the environment, right, with the scrum and the and the opponents on one side and, and, and the good guys on the other side, will be such that uh, you can say, well, you can affect three if you're just going to target opponents, but if you want to include an ally, and you can choose the ally, then you can include another opponent, right? And then that that's a good just a good mechanic um, because uh, it's it's always fun. It's like, oh, what's your deck save like, Joe? <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, so uh, so that's that's how I do it. It runs very well for me. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't have a lot of screen capture from it because when I do use Roll20, um, it's so it's so battle map centric that I don't pull away from the um, from the battle map very much and do theater of the mine, but I may start doing that. Um, I've had a couple of players on Roll20 request that because of the handful of times that I've done it, uh, it has rolled out so much better than the time and investment in precision movement, in, even on Roll20. Uh, so if you follow the screen captures I do and then post you know, on Twitch and then I post them to... Um, uh, and now I'm posting just the raw footage because I gave up on editing them to uh, YouTube. Uh, then you may see that come and go, and that may help if, if that's something you're interested in. Um, and uh, like I say, I'm not I'm not trying to to win an argument here. Uh, I just want uh, DMs to understand the full range of their options, um, and should feel, and I and I hope that they to give them the confidence that they need uh, to try out new things to see to see if they can make their game better and and if they if they don't if they that, that, I'm, I mean I'm not I, I don't have any dog in that fight um, I'm not I'm, I'm not trying to to say that there's a right way or a wrong way I'm saying that what I like best uh, and and I hope that everyone finds what they like best um, and that it works well for them All right, so uh, I'm, I'm, I am over. I shot for, for seven minutes and I'm at almost 10. So thanks for taking a look and stopping by. I will see you next time.